Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, a couple of AEW shows have been cancelled and is a new TV deal coming soon? WWE talents have been hit with a surprising new ban. Hikaru Shida is back and she's swerving everybody. And the world title match is set for AEW Double or Nothing. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I've just had to go through the Ticketmaster buying process, so I'm a bit tired. And this is the news. <laughs> what a website. Um, <laughs> let's uh, talk about AEW Dark now, AEW Dark Elevation. They're dumb. They're dumb. RIP in peace. So there were some rumours of this last week when Fight TV were listing Dark Elevation as the last ever episode. And it was like a best of type deal as well I don't think there was any much original stuff on there if any at all so that got some eyebrows raising but yesterday Andrew Zarian of the Matt Men of uh, the Wrestling Observer reporting <coughs> AW Dark pardon you yeah. AW Dark and Elevation have ended for the time being this is in part due the but I cannot speak uh, this is uh, due to AW signing a new deal for AW Collision to air on Saturdays Part of the new deal is that AEW wrestling content will exclusively air on Warner Brothers Ooh. Discovery. Uh, as of today, this does not include Ring of Honor. Now, Fightful have come through with some details on here as well, corroborating what, what Andrew has said there. Um, noting that sources have indicated that yes, the majority of AEW programming will now be on Warner Bros. Discovery. That's their TV partner, they own TNT and TBS. By the way, mm -hmm. you probably knew that, but just in case you didn't, now you do. Uh, a new <laughs> television deal or an alteration to the existing deal uh, is expected to be announced later in the month. And we should note as an aside that the Warner Bros. Discovery upfronts are on the 17th of, no of May. So maybe it'll coincide with that. Uh -huh. I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps. We know that is that where they like showcase all the big shows yeah. they've got coming Yeah, up. and yeah. it's like, look at all this stuff. Um, so it would make sense to announce something AEW related on that if they're going to do it there. Um, obviously, we know AEW's deal with TV expires later this year. Yeah. So, like, this was going to happen sooner rather than later. So, maybe they announced a new one. Maybe it's just an alteration. We'll find out. Collision is coming. But to Dark and Dark Elevation, obviously, they were on YouTube. So, if you have an exclusive deal with Warner Bros, you can't put them out anymore. You can, And they're not really the kind of shows that you can put on TV. No. Um, so, and they've kind of been replaced in a way by Ring of Honor, which is like similar with the squash match format, but with a few more substantial matches in there. I'll keep my thoughts on this relatively brief because I've waffled on for a long time here. Um, I think it's kind of a shame mm -hmm. because uh, a lot of my personal favorite AEW wrestlers worked most of their matches on Dark and Elevation. Mm -hmm. So that's a shame. It also means you won't get like real stories like Will Hobbs coming in as just a, an enhancement talent kicking ass yeah just killing it getting a full-time gig and like earning that people like serpentico as well uh people like fuego del sol daniel garcia appeared on on dark before becoming a full-timer and stuff so like it had value in that regard it was also really good for getting talent reps uh and i'm sure like th th they were fun watches the other side of this is that aw already has a lot of shows yeah and if they're introducing two more hours the least vital of those shows is unquestionably Dark and Dark Elevation, which were, if you're watching every minute of those shows every week, you're insane. <laughs> you're you're a super fan, <laughs> and uh, I respect your time. Um, I couldn't do it personally. I kind of tuned in and watched the odd match here and there. Yeah. So it's an understandable choice and a bit of a shame at the same time. Yeah, look, I've never really watched Dark or Dark Animation like you or often through you. You'd say, oh, you need to check this thing out or I saw stuff on Twitter or whatever it may be. But without a doubt, they served a purpose and not just sort of fleshing out people's rankings. Like you say, I think it's useful for people not just to get the reps of being in the ring, but getting used to having cameras around, even if, like you say, it's only for a small YouTube audience. I think the real loss here is the fun we used to get from Taz, Excalibur, um, Daddy Magic, and Big Sh Paul White yes, that's uh, a on good commentary. Point. That, that's that's the real loss here. And like things like, yeah. <laughs> where else are you going to see a panda wrestling a dinosaur, man? Shout out to all the great cameos over the years. Pandas, yeah. the pandas, Ultimo Panda, and something else. Uh, Puff, the legend hanging out with Butcher and the Blade. Like, guys like Hobbs coming through, like yeah, I said Yeah, it really was really good yeah. for, for what it was. Joey Janela versus Kenny Omega. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, so it's like, it's not something that was essential viewing, and it's an understandable decision, 
But I, it's a bit of a shame. Yeah, and now Collision's on the way. I can go from not watching Dark and Dark Elevation to not watching, watching Rampage. <laughs> along with everyone else. And apparently. now Collision comes along, you can go to not watching Dynamite. <laughs> yeah. And then a pay-per-view <laughs> happens and you can not watch any wrestling ever again. God, what a dark time that yeah. would be. What do these losers do? But just, just watch other sports. Shh, post. Shh, post mostly. Yeah, honest, probably. Yeah. Uh, right, there's been a new ban enacted within WWE, Andy. WWE wrestlers are no longer allowed to take photos that show them bleeding. This is according to a new report from the brilliant Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Radio. Uh, this probably hot on the heels off a really kind of kick-ass couple of segments with blood in them in NXT. Uh, JC Jane busted herself open in that big grudge match with Gigi Dolene, which I've got to be honest, really enhanced it. Like I'm not going to sit here and campaign for blood in lots of matches because I think there's a bit of overkill. It was accidental in... as well. Yeah, wasn't exactly. It? Yeah. And I think it was, I forgot what her new name is, Casey Catanzaro, Katana Chance. Katana Chance. She uh, got a bit busted open and I was like, Oh, this, I mean, the match itself was great anyway, but it really took it up another level. It, it often does, yeah. But I will say, um, they are now forbidden, yeah, from uh, photographing injuries and blood. But this would be in line with the general company policy. Obviously, most of the time on telly, they just go, don't show it, don't, don't, no, don't look, it's yeah. PG. Look, uh, there's been speculation, obviously, Andy, about them turning that last hour into bloodbath <laughs> or something, or maybe allowing it to be a little bit more. But I've, I've always been in the opinion, Look, I'm not going to sit here and campaign for my wrestlers to bust, bust, it, or bust themselves open because sometimes it undercuts stuff. Like Britt Baker's beat down with the the uh, kendo stick was kind of lessened because we've seen people get busted open a lot on AW sure. Dynamite, right? But also, I don't want it to be so sort of... I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for here, but so clinical that it, no one ever gets busted open. I think yeah. if it's an accident like that, yeah. lean into it. I mean, by God, it helped Finn Balor. He's been leaning into it a lot recently. Yeah, the blood debate obviously has become increasingly heated in the past few years because one company does it more than the other yeah. and people play sports teams and there's a lot of tribalism and that's become part of a that. A lot of people are disingenuous. The 100%, that never happens. Um, my stance on it is that like people can do whatever the heck they want. Yeah. Um, do I think that maybe AEW that could maybe do it a bit less frequently so that when they do do it, it means a little bit more? Yeah, I think that's a very fair point. Uh, do I think that WWE programming could benefit from maybe the odd bit of color here and there? Yes, absolutely. As we've seen from the accidental ones like the JC Jane situation, yeah. when people lean into it and like fire up and stuff, it's really great. And it makes it feel more like a like, hateful, heated, literal blood feud. Um, that being said, it is a PG product and a large part of that involves marketing towards children. So yes. I completely understand the band. I completely understand their stance. Uh, it's. I think it's very fair. They have sponsors they are beholden to and uh, there you go. They're a PG product that direct their product to kids and that's why they'll only do it when Brock Lesnar hard ways around the audience. <laughs> <summer laughs> Tries to concuss a man. What yeah. are you thinking? Yeah. You, can't, you can't possibly use a razor blade. Instead, yeah. I'll just use a point of my yeah. elbow. The not, not on Brock Lesnar and, and, and Randy this, by the way. It's just a dumb decision. Really silly. Can you hard way safely? Probably. Yeah. He's, a, he's a former UFC heavyweight champion. I just wouldn't do it. Hello, scariest man alive. Can you cave my skull in? I love the compilation <laughs> recently after the Cody dropping him of yeah. when Brock wants to sell. He... He's a, he's a great seller. Oh, he's a great seller. Like terrifying. The, the man. Finn Balor match, selling the guts after the diverticulitis. Oh. Like, fantastic. Brock Lesnar's great at his job. Some respect Brock Lesnar's name. Just please never ask him to do that thing. <laughs> no, no more hard way. Hikaru Shida's back. Yay! Back on the scene. Final way saying boo, yay! Little this is what happened. Yeah, a little swerve Ugh. action last night. Great, this. Soraya. Doing the L's. That's uh, the wrong way. Is that the wrong way around? I can't. I can never. That, is that it? I don't know. Is it like an L to you? It's the best. Yeah, yeah you're doing it right. Best hand gesture in wrestling, uh, obviously. <laughs> uh, Soraya wrestled Willow Nightingale on Dynamite last night. Afterwards, big angle. You know the score. The Outcasts beating up Willow Nightingale. Oh, it's Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker. Uh, they get beaten up as well. Who's gonna make the save? It's Hikaru Shida, but no, she's hugging Soraya and the Outcasts. She's turned heel. Hikaru Shida back for the first time in months. But that no, was a swerve. Uh, she sprayed Soraya in the face. That was great. <laughs> with the great face sell. Uh, uh, she joined forces with the AEW Originals, which makes sense because she is one of those. Uh, so now it looks like we're going to get Hikaru Shida 
Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter versus The Outcast, which is a pretty cool wrinkle to this story. Uh, she's back on TV, she's been gone for months, she's been dealing with some injury bits and pieces here and there, as was reported. Uh, she's been in Japan a little bit as well, working for some indie promotions over there, which is cool to see. I like seeing people branch out and go elsewhere, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, but very happy to have uh, Shida back. I will say that a trio of Hikaru Shida, Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter kicks ridiculous amounts of ass, probably to the extent that Soraya's can accidentally call someone a twat next week and get fined again. <laughs> Maybe she can call them a wanker or something. So I, I was know. working it out then. I was like, okay, we got Brit, and obviously no, name rhymes with, but Hikaru. Your name rhymes with? <laughs> Hikaru, your name rhymes with poo. Right, so. There you go, Sorry. <laughs> Free, free genius. There you go. And, and like, yeah, I really like this development. I like the way it was presented, like you say. Um, and I would not be surprised if, I don't know where they're going to do this, probably double or nothing, one would assume. It's one of those cards yeah. where for once you can actually plan things out weeks, if not months, in advance. More on that in a second. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they bring some more people in. Yeah. If they if, if they constantly keep trying to have the numbers advantage, because that's all they've been using the outcast. So place your bets in the comments. We we'll, might even do some uh, guessing on the Dynamite review a little bit later on, what culture wrestling, wherever you get your podcast from, as to who else could join each side, because I'm sure you can look at that roster and go, yeah, that makes sense. And da -da 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 -da. Yeah. We've seen Riho hanging out with the originals and stuff. like. It's yeah, at like least at least Ikari Shida's weapon looked proportional in relation to her. I think the re I think the real Rio's thing is one's like a Gandalf walking <laughs> stick. I think that makes it better. Oh like, yeah, like, like, this tiny person with this <laughs> massive weapon. I think that's awesome. That's sick. Uh, right. Speaking of uh, AW um, and last night's Dynamite. As a result of the main event, the uh, double or nothing one would assume main event is set for the world title. World title. Uh, it's the Four Pillars match as it probably should have been about three weeks ago. <laughs> uh, we've had that stupid tournament and DQ shenanigans, etc., etc. But on last night's show, it was the two men who, at time of, got shot, uh, were going to be in the main <laughs> event, Sammy Guevara versus MJF. But they were in a tag team against Jungle Boy and Darby Allen, even though they couldn't quite coexist necessarily. Um, and the rule was if Darby Allen and Jungle Boy Jack Perry won, they'd be added to make it a four-way. They did win, despite the fact that both teams couldn't really get along. Sammy and uh, MGF, <laughs> despite all the hugs and kisses, just uh, keep needling each good, other. Good. And uh, Sammy drops MJF, turns around, gets dropped himself. It looks like Jungle Boy's going to get the victory, but there's been a tag. And just at the last second, Jack Perry rolls out of the way as Darby Allen hits Sammy Guevara with the coffin drop to get the one, two, three, four way. MJF fumes as we go off the air on AEW Dynamite. There you go. Uh, <coughs> I think that the, the drama between these parties was uh, done pretty well this week. Really well, actually. Uh, particularly some weeks it's it's felt maybe a little bit convoluted. Yeah. And like, you know me, like I prefer simple stuff. So my preferred uh, execution of this feud would have been hey we're the four pillars but you're the champion and we were branded this two years ago but now you're up here and we're kind of like we're still mm -hmm. up here but we're a little bit lower one and one a yeah let's do it we're let's prove that we're not the one a all three of us were on the same level let's have a fight with you in, in a four-way match at the pay-per-view really simple i didn't need the tournament and the bet the fake friend stuff but a lot of people are into that kind of thing and sometimes you just have to go hey that's not quite for me i prefer it this way but that's totally cool so, three we weeks on there. Saturday, is we it? May 28th, Las Vegas. Yeah. Sunday. Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. A day. Friday. I want a stag do. Oh. So, I'm uh, in this, alone in the office, in the Sadness Village. More on that, that's when we can uh, <laughs> legally allow to Literally going to be the only person oh. here. At what culture <laughs> WWE, if you want to send us Twitter questions, let's move on to them right now. Um, nope, I asked that question yesterday. Andrew Richardson. <laughs> This is our first question of the day. Andrew writes, Morning, you absolute legends. Morning, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, with Collision and Dynamite being separate shows with their own rosters, what do you see happening with the AEW pay-per-views? Do they have their own or do a WWE and have both rosters on the same pay-per-view? Uh, for me, they've got to do both rosters on the same pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, I think that the WWE format, the old WWE format, which they might be bringing back of having single show pay-per-views, 
utopian makes sense if you put the ideas together because it, more people get more time, all of this stuff, more opportunities, more chance to tell different stories, yada yada yada. Never works out that way. The pay-per-views are never as well watched and they're never of the same quality. No. Um, so to me, bad idea. Uh, yeah, I would keep the dual branded pay-per-views. I would keep a relatively similar to schedule to the one they have now. I wouldn't necessarily add too many. I think AEW doing one long ass pay-per-view every three months as opposed to like one slightly shorter one every month. I think that's a good balance for them. Yeah. And it's different to what WWE does, which is good. Exactly. Um, Please just don't go to the formula where WWE had one every fortnight. Yeah, I don't need that in my <laughs> life. Uh, I love I love wrestling, but sometimes it's too much. Yeah. Like, listen, I love Skittles. I love French fries. I could not eat five kilos of those a day. That would I be the Skittles. equivalent. Send Skittles chewies. I'll eat five kilos. Oh, in brother. A, in the morning. You'll end Get up myself going. You'll end up uh, secreting sugar. It's gonna be great. Taste the bloody rainbow. Pink rainbow colored goo coming out your pores. Yeah, I agree completely with what you say though in terms of, uh, just, worst comes to the worst, just put them on opposite sides of the arena for their dressing rooms and say, maybe don't go and interact if there's still yeah, well, my thing with that is that if the if you have if it's so bad that people can't be in the same room as each other, then this is untenable. Yeah, you shouldn't do it at all. So hey, we'll I see. Thought you were going to go the opposite way there. Well, I I make them fight. Say, no, I thought you were going to say my thing with that is people should uh, down some cement and harden the up. <laughs> Either way, I support exactly what Andy Murray says. Yeah, I mean, like, there's the chaos option and there's the the actual realistic option. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I like both sometimes. Yeah. Let's all settle it over a game of Uno. No. Not <laughs> evil Uno. Hey, listen, if The Miz and CM Punk can squash the beef. Yeah. That was much more serious than The Young Bucks. I'm talking crap. Marcus gives us our second question of the day. Uh, Marcus is buzzing for All In, uh, as is What Culture Gaming's very own Scott Tailford, who I believe has just got tickets. Congratulations to you, Scott. Go and say hello to him. He's not Have the only one who just got tickets. Uh, Ticketmaster sucks ass, but let me just say. <laughs> Do you think we will see Soraya versus Hater for the build and an Osprey <laughs> or a Zack Sabre Jr. as UK peps? Peps. I wonder if they might put Hater and Soraya in different matches so they can both win. So they can both have like, yeah. Um, if we're talking all in, if, uh, yeah, they can both have like big moments and stuff that aren't necessarily intertwined. Although you could have them wrestle each other, and it'd be perfectly great. Uh, like it, that's the story they've been telling. Yeah. Um, but does that story continue for another three months? Yeah, I, I keep don't know. forgetting it's August. I yeah, it's, it's, it's ages away. Corner. It's ages away. What was the other part of it? Sorry. Uh, Osprey and Zack Sabre Jr. for UK games. Yeah, do it, do it. I don't think they need, need to bring in like 20 UK guys. You don't want to dilute what AEW is, but you cannot turn your nose up at Will Ospreay and Zack Sabre Jr., can you? Yeah. So, And they've worked AEW before. There is uh, one other UK guy they need to bring in, and I'm declaring myself as manager so I can get a cut of the profits. It's Simon Miller. Fair, fair. Can I manage him? I might be busy with a baby. <laughs> Take the baby. I, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it like a uh, remote. Take the baby. Just say, in fact, Quite the middle man, just send some money to me to the What Culture Office. Send I'm gonna be your money. dad, I need money, so don't do <laughs> don't, that, don't obviously. Do Jesus. But I mean there is a thanks option on these videos, so if you're feeling generous, Yeah, he is there. Yeah. Just saying. Final question today comes from Stephen Lewis, who says, I have a question, mate. Uh, the Writers Guild of America are on strike right now, and by the way, we should just like to say I'll throw us a solidarity the writers. Yeah. Did you see like the responses to their like to the claim they raised? Yes, and uh, Nicholas Mental. was telling me about them yeah. fighting AI and them going, no no no. Nick, yeah, Nicholas showed me it as well. It's absolutely insane. The AI thing was like, hey, AI can't like recreate like hum humanity or whatever, no. like in scripts and content and stuff. And the the response was, we'll give you training in technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll train you in the thing that's going to take your job. Shout out from one brilliant Adam to another brilliant Adam. Adam Conover, who I've seen all over everything, showing support for the writers. Uh, First saw him on College Humor, and he's doing he's doing great stuff now. Good stuff. Campaigning for these uh, writers. Anyway, does this uh, affect WWE's creative team at the moment, right, Stephen? So it's a, the short answer is that I don't really know, and I'm not going to pretend to know uh, because I don't know, and I I, I do not know. Um, but this is like. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if there would be any WWE writers who are part... What's the name of the group again? No, that's the Screen Actors Guild. I was about to say that. That's not it. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, know, yeah, I know what you mean. Though. The union. So I don't know. I guess it would depend on whether or not there were any members of that. Um, so my... I. Looking at it from a complete novice, non-expert stance, I would say probably not. Um... But if there is a sizable chunk of writers involved in mm. WWE, maybe. Um, I do think, however, that if this was going to have an impact on WWE or AEW television, that maybe 
uh, like a Sean Ross Sapp or a Dave Meltzer or a Mike Johnson, a credible reporter yeah. with a track record would have said as much. Yes, and exactly. found something. Um, WWE and unions generally don't mix. Yes. This so I would doubt it. Thing. I would sincerely doubt that it is going to affect. And it doesn't really matter within WWE because it still has to go through that old... Crikey. At the top. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, by the way... Emma Bunton apologised to Soraya, so I you're welcome. It. She I probably saw, saw this video. Real recognise real. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be at, she was at least Soraya extending an invite to uh, all in. Soraya's opponent. So make Hater versus Emma Bunton <laughs> run in for a baby spice. The yeah, 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 Hater versus, sorry, The man. killer versus the baby spice. Oh my God, she's hit it with a lollipop. I don't know what the gimmick's baby spice had apart from wearing pink and... Yeah. And singing songs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I don't think it's going to affect the uh, creative teams because, uh, yeah, unions and WWE generally aren't a thing. There you go. Um, That's our not at all expert analysis. Yeah. Probably. Was That's barely, all. barely even that. We were like, eh? Yeah. So you seem to suggest that, no. It's so. a good question, folks. Yeah, like, thank you for the question. And it's a yeah. big issue, obviously. So. Uh, also, uh, let's move on to today's and finally. <laughs> uh, and shout out to Matt Rains and uh, Still Rob, whose tweet I've stolen for this one. Um, bit of a crossover here. Surprised to see WWE Intercontinental Champion Gunther <laughs> in the audience. Oh, Wearing glasses. Stuff. As well. no, hey, looking what? very cool. No, Matt Reigns uh, went to the show last night and took a big. <laughs> you see it here with Jungle Boy as he heads up top. Big Michael Hamlet head, which popped all of us here in the water culture office. So once again, thank you, Matt Reigns, for that one. Send something nice to Matt Reigns today. He's lost fifty pounds. Yes, that's pretty impressive. Not and not it's really money, impressive because he's American. So he'd <laughs> say dollars. Yeah, he did just throw some bills down yeah, the drain or something. Great like effort great and uh, yeah, uh, nice to see people building bridges there. Yeah. Him and Hamlet, not always on the best of terms. See, but squash the beef. Yeah. Squash the beef. Squash the beef, preferably into a patty, and then I can eat it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I meant to say this earlier, congratulations to Will Washington. Yes. He's all elite. Yes. Lovely bloke. The wrestling media space will miss Will a lot. We've been lucky to have him yeah. on podcasts and stuff for like 18 years or whatever. I've always really enjoyed his, like his approach is it's very level-headed. It's very grounded in not being like over the top and and going this side good, this side bad, whatever, whatever. Um, I've always enjoyed what he brought to the table. I think that he was a very fair, balanced, professional yeah. analyst and podcaster, while also not just being dry as unbuttered toast <laughs> and like just being an entertaining listen. So congratulations to Will. Uh, I'll, I'll miss what he brought to the wrestling media space. Well and, deserved. Uh, but this is uh, good news. Uh, right, let us know your thoughts on everything in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. As I said, myself and Daniel, we're sitting down to review AW Dynamite a little bit later on today. How does Excalibur do it, man? Uh, thoughts, Twitter questions. It's Wacky how, Friday how tomorrow. How do you do it, is the question. It's Wacky Friday. It is. Where are we doing it? Are we doing it at YouTube? We're doing it on YouTube Twitter. community. We did uh, Twitter last week. Yeah, uh, flip reverse like yeah. Belize and Squad. Yeah, we did it on Twitter last week. And one of the questions was, why, why are you lying about Vince McMahon? And I was like, what? <laughs> I think you misunderstood the alligator. <laughs> Yes, so check out the YouTube community Would you page. feed Vince McMahon to an alligator? No, it's too good. Yeah. So the alligator, alligator Also, we can't good. advocate murdering yeah. people, so. I love murder. Murder? Uh, I'll, I'll ever do it again. So all Twitter stuff, Matt Rains, etc., etc. at at what culture WWE? Watch, they can follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at. At Andy H. Murray. The H stands for Hoop No More. It also stands for Happy Star Trek Day, everybody. Nanu Nanu. Yeah. <laughs> Love long and may the fourth. Do the thing. Do the thing. Scissor me, daddy. Uh, more. I did like that with Penta last night. That was, fun. That was good. And he's like, Ey. also, genuinely, if you're one of our, I'm just going to gen generally say here because I'm bothered to actually look. If you're one of the British viewers, go out and vote today. Very important. Local elections. Please do go out and vote. And you can probably guess the way I'm going to suggest you go vote, but I'm not going to say it because legally I can't. But go out and vote regardless. Because <laughs> otherwise, you can't complain about the state these bloody countries in. Uh, right. Uh, Coronation this. Nope. Uh, Adam Wilborn on Twitter. At what culture WWE for all of us, uh, as I said. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you soon. The only king we recognize is Brody King. And King Woods. <laughs>